This is the first of two videos on functional dyspepsia and is an introduction. This video is on functional dyspepsia, which is also called non-ulcer dyspepsia. Functional means disorders for which no abnormalities can be seen with the naked eye or under the microscope. Dyspepsia means indigestion. Functional dyspepsia is a chronic condition that can go on for years. It is estimated that about 10 to 20% of the population suffers from this condition. Functional dyspepsia does not lead to other serious medical condition. It does not affect life expectancy and can go on for years and patients usually learn how to live with it and some improve with time. There are three common symptoms that are seen in functional dyspepsia. One is called postprandial fullness. It is fullness of the stomach after eating a normal amount of food. It is also described as an unpleasant feeling like food is still in the stomach. The second symptom is called early satiety. This is the inability to finish a full meal or feeling full after eating even a small meal. The third symptom is pain over the stomach area. This pain could be a burning sensation or stomach cramps. Less common symptoms include nausea, vomiting, belching and bloating. Patients with functional dyspepsia can be broadly divided into two groups according to their symptoms. One group is in whom the main symptom is pain over the stomach area. This group is called the epigastric pain syndrome or EPS. Epigastric means the area of the stomach. The main mechanism here seems to be hypersensitivity to pain. The second group is in whom the main symptom is fullness of the meals or an inability to finish a meal. This group is called a postprandial distress syndrome. Prandial means a meal, so postprandial means after a meal. The main mechanism here is an abnormality in emptying of stomach contents. Some patients have a mixture of both pain and fullness and early satiety. So what causes functional dyspepsia? Abnormal stomach emptying. Abnormal movement and coordination of the muscles of the stomach. These muscles aid in the emptying of food contents from the stomach. In functional dyspepsia, a slowdown in gastric emptying is common. Less common is the opposite, which is a rapid emptying of stomach contents. Secondly, there is hypersensitivity to expansion of the stomach. Patients with functional dyspepsia feel pain or discomfort when there is a normal quantity of food in the stomach, while a normal person does not feel anything. Thirdly, is a stomach germ or bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. A stomach germ or bacteria called Helicobacter pylori may have a role to play in this condition. This is because clearing the bacteria from the stomach results in a permanent cure in some patients. 
The bacteria can be cleared using antibiotics. In some patients, the condition happens after a bout of food poisoning. This is believed to be due to a change in the composition of the bacteria in the intestines resulting in excessive gas production. Functional dyspepsia can last for up to one year after the food poisoning. Another factor could be abnormality in the gut-brain axis. The gut-brain axis is a bi-directional communication system between the gut, which includes the stomach and intestines, and the brain. This is true nerves, blood circulation, and gut bacteria. So some patients who suffer from stress, anxiety, and depression seem also to suffer from functional dyspepsia, and this is believed to be through the gut-brain axis. So what happens in the brain affects the stomach and intestines and what happens in the stomach and intestines affects the brain. There are several medical conditions that can have similar symptoms to functional dyspepsia. This includes acid reflux or gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. In GERD, heartburn and regurgitation are the main symptoms. Often, Acid reflux and functional dyspepsia can occur in the same patient. Ulcers in the stomach and first part of the small intestine, these are called peptic ulcers, gallstones or stones in the gallbladder. Another condition is excess bacteria in the small intestine called small intestine bacterial overgrowth. This condition can follow the use of antibiotics or drugs that suppress stomach acid production like proton pump inhibitors, for example, omeprazole. Allergy to gluten called celiac disease. Gluten is found in wheat, barley and rye. This condition is rare in Asia, except in those with Indo-Caucasian heritage. Slow down in stomach emptying called gastroparesis. In this condition, vomiting is the main symptom. Then we have the irritable bowel syndrome. Nearly half of patients with functional dyspepsia may also suffer from the irritable bowel syndrome. Eating disorders. These are conditions that are characterized by irregular eating habits and severe distress due to concern about body weight or shape. Eating disturbances may include inadequate or excessive food intake which can ultimately damage an individual's well-being. Eating disorders, therefore, can also have symptoms similar to functional dyspepsia. In older people, cancer of the stomach or esophagus might also have to be excluded. This is a list of drugs and herbs which can cause dyspepsia and these are some of the commonly used drugs. This is not a complete list of medicines as there are many other drugs that can cause similar symptoms. This slide is a summary of the medical conditions with symptoms similar to functional dyspepsia. Investigations done in functional dyspepsia might include blood tests like a full blood count kidney and liver profiles, calcium, thyroid study, blood tests for gluten sensitivity or celiac disease if suspected, ultrasound of abdomen, urea breath test for helicobacter pylori, and gastroscopy. Gastroscopy is a procedure where a thin flexible tube is passed through the mouth to the stomach.